we added a bundle extension for loading one specific type of JSON data from our app bundle. But now we have a second type, missions.json. This contains slightly more complex JSON. Every mission has an ID number, which means we can use identifiable easily. Every mission has a description, which is a free text string taken from Wikipedia, keeping in mind the license from earlier. Every mission has an array of crew, where each crew member has a name and role. And all but one mission has a launch date. Sadly, Apollo 1 never launched, because a launch rehearsal cabin fire destroyed the command module and killed the crew. Let's start converting that to code. Crew roles need to be stored as their own struct, stored in the name string and role string. So, create a new Swift file called mission.swift and give it this code. Struct crew role conforms to codable. Let name string, let role string. As for the missions, this will be an ID integer, an array of crew role, and a description string. But what about the launch date? We might have one, but we also might not have one. What should that be? Well, think about it. How does Swift represent this maybe, maybe not elsewhere? How would we store might be a string, might be nothing at all? I hope the answer is clear. We use optionals. In fact, if we mark a property as optional, Codable will automatically skip over it if the value is missing from our input JSON. So add this second struct to mission.swift now. Struct mission conforms to codable and identifiable. Let id int, let launch date optional string, let crew array of crew role, let description string. Before we look at how to load JSON into that, I want to demonstrate one more thing. Our crew role struct was specifically made to hold data about missions. And as a result, we can actually put the crew role struct inside the mission struct like this. This is called a nested struct and is simply one struct placed inside of another. This won't affect our code in this project, but elsewhere it's useful to help keep your code organized. Rather than saying crew role, you'd write mission.crewrole. If you can imagine a project with several hundred custom types, adding this extra context can really help. Now let's think how we can load missions.json into an array of mission structs. We already added a bundle extension that loads some JSON into an array of astronaut structs. So we could very easily copy and paste that, then tweak it so it loads missions rather than astronauts. However, there's a better solution. We can leverage Swift's generic system, which is an advanced feature we touched on lightly back in project three. Generics allow us to write code that's capable of working with various different types. In this project, we wrote the bundle extension to work with arrays of astronauts. But really, we want to be able to handle arrays of astronauts, arrays of missions, or potentially lots of other things. To make a method generic, we give it a placeholder for certain types. This is written in angle brackets after the method name, but before its parameters, like this. We can use anything for that placeholder. We could have written type, type of thing, or even fish, it doesn't matter. T is a bit of a convention in coding as a shorthand placeholder for type. Inside the method, we can now use T everywhere we would use array of astronaut. It is literally a placeholder for the type we want to work with. So rather than returning astronaut, we would instead return T like this. Now be very careful. There is a big difference between T and array of T. Remember, T is a placeholder for whatever type we want to ask for. So if we say decode an array of astronauts, then T becomes an array of astronauts. But if we attempt to return array of T from decode, we'd actually be returning an array of array of astronauts. Down here towards the end of the decode method, there's another place where array of astronauts used. Again, please change that to T like this. So what we've said is that decode will be used with some sort of type, such as an array of astronaut and it should attempt to decode the file it's loaded to be that type. If you try compiling this code, you'll see an error in Xcode. Instance method decode from requires that T conform to decodable. What it means is that T could be anything. It could be an array of astronauts, or it could be an array of something else entirely. The problem is that Swift can't be sure the type we're working with conforms to the codable protocol. So rather than take a risk, it's refusing to build our code. Fortunately, we can fix this with a constraint. 
we can tell Swift that T can be whatever we want as long as that thing conforms to codable. That way Swift knows it's safe to use and will make sure we don't try to use a method with a type that doesn't conform to codable. To add the constraint, change the method signature to this, colon codable. If you try compiling again, you'll see that things still aren't working, but now it's for a different reason. Generic parameter T could not be inferred over in the astronaut's property of content view. This line worked fine before, but there's been an important change now. Before, decode would always return an array of astronauts, but now it returns anything we want as long as it conforms to codable. Now we know that it will still return an array of astronauts because the actual underlying data hasn't changed, but Swift doesn't know that. Our problem is that decode can return any type that conforms to codable, but Swift needs more information. It wants to know exactly what type it's going to be. So to fix this, we have to use a type annotation so Swift knows exactly what astronauts will be. Finally, after all that work, we can now also load mission.json into another property in content view. Please add this below astronauts. Let missions, array of mission, equals bundle.main.decode missions.json. And that's the power of generics. We can use the same decode method to load any JSON from our bundle into any Swift type that conforms to codable. We don't need half a dozen variants of the same method. Before we're done, there's one last thing I'd like to explain. Earlier you saw the message, instance method decode from requires that T conform to decodable. And you might have wondered what decodable was. After all, we've been using codable everywhere. Well, behind the scenes, codable is just an alias for two separate protocols, encodable and decodable. You can use codable if you want, or you can use encodable and decodable if you prefer being specific. It's down to you.